Hey guys, it's Erlaine. So welcome to this week's video. This was not what I planned originally to make, but iMovie wants to be a little bitch. I'm literally so irritated. I'm coming off of a period. So, you know, there's like some leftover PMSing, you feel me? Anyways, today's video is going to be another kind of commentary-esque video. You guys seem to receive my last one that I did on Madison Beer and like beauty standards really well. And ever since then, I've wanted to make more, but this time I'm not getting ready. I'm just sitting down and talking. This time around, I wanted to talk about something that that hits a little bit closer to home rather than just my face and that is about Olivia D'Andrea a youtuber here on the tubes who has recently kickstarted again her second season of the very popular series the glow up diaries so once again before I get into anything please if you did not listen to the disclaimer at the beginning of the video listen to it I just want you to be safe please be mindful of the content you decide to consume because it'll either directly or subliminally have an effect on you so just be careful if this is not a video you want to watch click out I don't care it's it's, it's fine. <laughs> and again, let me reiterate, I'm not a scientist, doctor, nutritionist, psychologist, any of the sort. I'm not here to diagnose anyone, send hate to anyone. But this is simply just my opinion, my commentary on the series, how I feel as someone who has dealt with the same things. So yeah, let's get into it. <laughs> So Olivia is a YouTuber who falls somewhere on the spectrum of fitness and lifestyle YouTube videos. And before the Glow Up Diary series, most of her videos consisted of like dance, stretching, yoga, things of that nature, because she is a dancer and still dances and has always advocated for a healthy, active lifestyle. And all of those videos have had millions upon millions of views. So she's definitely not like a small YouTuber. She's noted and has even collaborated with people like Blogilates on fitness videos. So that's super cool for how old she was at the time. So the Globe Diaries began in 2018 when she first announced the video on a trailer on her channel. I remember this being recommended to me back then and it was such a like crazy thing because the thing about the Globe Diaries is Olivia uploaded this around a time where when talking about working out, getting healthy, losing weight, it was definitely victim to diet culture and the difference between that and Olivia's videos where Olivia's videos were showing a much more realistic side to things like weight loss and fitness that a lot of people don't like to share on camera. It was described as a raw documentary x series that really dug deep into the realities of what she was struggling with not only with the intent of weight loss but even showing the more mental turmoil of things rather than just the physical outward appearance which is something that a lot of people really appreciated again because it was in a time where toxic diet culture was embedded in a lot of weight loss type diet fitness videos so season one ended toward the end of july in 2020 and we got to see what olivia quoted as her food addiction and some of the deepest depths and trials and tribulations of it. We saw clips of her struggling with binge eating, very strong sugar addiction, crash dieting, and again a lot of the other shocking realities that a lot of people do not talk about. And even Olivia mentioned in those videos during season one there was a short clip in one of the episodes where she mentioned while she was eating a cookie it's so easy for people to just say eat less, exercise more, and then you'll lose weight. But she genuinely was showing her emotions towards that and how frustrated she was with herself and even just losing weight in general. Sometimes you're at the gym and it's just so hard and you're like oh it's easier said than done just eat less and exercise more it's like you have all these like cravings you know you know i'm consistent in a lot of things but when it comes to weight loss it is so hard like so many struggles it's like i want the cookie but i also want to lose weight and again it was such a relatable series and the way it was portrayed was so relatable for a lot of people because who doesn't love a good you know documentary series you feel me so season two was set to begin at the beginning of 2021 after a little bit of hiatus and it did when she uploaded the first video of season two called how food addiction ruined my life as of now the series is still ongoing and there are three videos at the time i wrote this script 
and I'm filming this video. So from this point forward, I'm gonna be sharing mainly my gripes, concerns, again, just my opinion, my commentary on the series, and more so with season two, because I didn't have too much of a problem with season one. I actually really enjoyed season one, and I'm constantly re-watching it because of how well done it was. But season two, I and plenty of other people on the internet have some issues with because it is so early in the series for a lot of these red flags, if you will, to pop up, especially as a viewer and if you sympathize with this type of content or are truly watching it for like inspiration, tips, whatever. And again, I'm well aware of the fact that the series just started. There's literally three episodes, so don't <laughs> get on me for that. But again, I feel pulled and inclined to make the video for that exact reason. It's very early in the series to be hearing things like this and I hope that this type of criticism, if she ends up watching my video or even other videos commenting on this thing, that she can take that constructive criticism and implement it to make better episodes in the future. That was a struggle sentence. A lot of what I plan to go over in this video has already been addressed by Olivia on social media and she actually recently uploaded a video kind of debunking or explaining a little bit of apologizing for some of these things that I will also be mentioning. <laughs> Why can't I talk today? My point still stands because they are things that still happen and some of these things still haven't been particularly clarified or fixed if you will. It's just really important that with a platform you know how to use it wisely and kind of be responsible with the videos you put out the words you say in them so let me make a reminder that the glow up diaries whenever she uploads the videos these are videos from a past tense and not what represents the present right now and i feel like a lot of people forget that even i did especially with season two because of the problems that were arising that i will be explaining later so glow up diary season one was filmed between the years of 2018 and about half of 2019 and season two was filmed all throughout 2020 but because she's uploaded during 2021 I feel like a lot of people forget that this is like kind of the old her and not the way she is now and what represents her life now so I just want to make that very clear be mindful of that if you haven't watched this series and you're okay to watch it please go watch it before you watch this <laughs> After the drop of the first episode from season two and kind of remembering what we know from the last episode of season one, if you didn't watch the series, season one basically ended on her really, 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 really struggling with the kind of binge eating and food addiction and also welcoming to negative thoughts because she was someone who never really struggled with self-love no matter what she looked like. Let me recap last season with a little extra information that I actually left out. Restriction started when I just wanted to lose a little weight and get more fit before college. I was uneducated about the effects food was having on me. I saw food as calories rather than nutrients. I ate for emotions in the moment, not fuel for nourishment. I got hooked on the chemicals and the toxic cycle of binge and restrict. I remember posting Glow Up Diary Season 1 and people getting annoyed with me in the comments. This is getting old. When is she finally going to glow up? Are you purposely prolonging the series? The series is so repetitive. I'm unsubscribed. You claim you're trying to change, but Love I don't you, see it. girl, does it really take this long to glow up? How hard is it to glow up? Do glow up diaries it more like glow up never diaries? That was stressful because it was true. I needed to find answers, so I took a break and went offline. And again, I quote what she labeled as her food addiction, she was intensely struggling with and had a hard time trying to get it under control. I will explain these quotes I'm doing later. Just bear with me. So season two is what was and what is going to show us how she overcame this kind of binge eating problem and how she dealt with the mental turmoil of it all. Kind of like the self-destruction she was going through and how she grew from that. But it also shows us some tidbits and clips from around the time season one was filmed that showed some even darker sides of her reality and kind of like what she was thinking during that time. And for that reason, this is one of the main reasons why myself and a lot of other viewers who watch the series agree that season two is a lot heftier and heavier than season one was. So you see me using quotes whenever I say food addiction because that is what Olivia quotes as what she's going through. A food addiction, a sugar addiction as well. She's used those two kind of interchangeably. Also junk food addiction. Chapter one, my food addiction. Addiction. The repeated involvement of a substance or activity that continues despite all negative consequences that arise from it. 
And before I go into kind of the main controversial topics that myself and a lot of viewers are concerned about when talking about this series, I want to give you a few definitions of some of the terms we're going to be going over and would be kind of good required reading <laughs> before getting into the nitty gritty of the actual issues that I have. So to understand a few different perspectives, if you're someone who has never struggled with disordered eating and eating disorder, I'm going to give you a few definitions. And these all come from the National Eating Disorder Association. I, of course, will have their link and phone number if you need it for the hotline in the description. So according to the NEDA, normalized non-disordered eating is when one mindfully consumes food when hungry and is able to stop when full. Additionally, they incorporate variety into their diet. Now disordered eating is a little bit of a stickier situation because that more has to do with things like eating when you're bored, societal pressures that influence how you eat. But I think the main consensus that separates disordered eating, normal eating from eating disorders is whether or not it takes away from the functionality of your daily life. They may restrict, they may overeat, they may overexercise, underexercise, not go and engage in their social life because of food. Like you take away your quality of life, your not only your happiness, but your relationships and just your peace of mind because of food. That's when it kind of falls into that eating disorder category. Does that make sense? Now, binge eating disorder, which is kind of what Olivia alludes to in season one and season two when describing her food addiction, she never used uses the word really disorder she kind of just says binge eating as a plain statement but i will give you the definition of binge eating disorder again according to the national eating disorders association so binge eating disorder or bed is a severe life-threatening and treatable eating disorder characterized by recurrent episodes of eating large quantities of food often very quickly and to the point of discomfort you can feel loss of control during the binge experience shame distress or guilt afterwards and it is the most common disorder in the united states and one of the most stigmatized which is why we're here today making this video. So from that definition in and of itself, let me make it very clear that Olivia has said time and time again that she does not have an eating disorder. And if someone says they don't have an eating disorder, and even if their health physicians say they don't have an eating disorder, it is not my place to sit here and say they have an eating disorder. But one of the biggest controversies related to the Glow Up Diaries, especially in the fact that she says she struggles with binge eating, is a lot of people are saying, you know, Olivia, for one, you very clearly show signs of binge eating and two, you may want to consider getting some professional help, if you will. Olivia even said in a video that she did end up going to a physician and even contacted the eating disorders hotline at some point to try and deal with her binge eating and figure out where the problem roots from. And oddly, her physician... <laughs> me twitching. Oddly, her physician did say that her binge eating was habitual. It was a habit that was formed. Not, you know, something that might be, how you say, deeper rooted, like a mental illness. Are you catching my drift? <laughs> Eating disorders already are not taken seriously. The idea is that eating disorders are for physical changes only. You can get an eating disorder if you want to lose weight or, you know, you can stop your eating disorder when you reach your goal weight or whatever, right? But very wrong because the fact is, like I said earlier, eating disorders go much past the physical. It's about how food, your body, whatever, wherever it's rooted from affects affects your quality of life. It's a mental problem way more than it is a physical. That goes hand in hand with the idea that health is functionality versus what you look like on the outside. Even if you have a six pack of abs, that doesn't mean your body is functioning properly. You're probably really dehydrated, honestly. And you can see time and time and time again in the series that Olivia has struggled severely with how her binge eating has affected her life. Food became the priority above all else in my my life. Therefore, life became unmanageable. Food over my appearance and hygiene. Sometimes the first thing I did in the morning after rolling out of bed was walk out of the door looking like crap, hair uncombed, teeth unbrushed, was to go to Starbucks to get breakfast. Two cake pops, a cocoa rice crispy bar, a chocolate chip cookie, and a breakfast sandwich. These last two days have been really bad. My room's been a mess. Um, my sleep schedule is so beyond messed up. I mean, I woke up at 2 a.m. today, 5 a.m. I went to... Clock hit 6 a.m. I check out the Krispy Kreme hours. It said it, w it opened 30 minutes ago. I drove to Krispy Kreme. Because I keep focusing on weight loss, nothing deeper than that. 
I just go crazy and then go eat stuff like this. And that right there, that is not having a good quality of life. You do not want every single one of your thoughts to be wrapped around what you're going to eat next, what you want to eat, and just revolving your life around food. And she even says in a short clip also that when she binges, she feels like it's kind of an outer body experience. She's not even present. It's like you eat the food and then one second you're just kind of back to normal rather than being present with your food and eating it consciously. It's like a mindless, I don't want to say mindless habit because that's a bad choice of words, but it's like a mindless action. You don't even realize you're doing it. And of course, we see so many episodes of her feeling that shame, feeling that guilt, feeling the stress and just destruction. You feel out of control almost when it comes to binge eating. Prior to her making the video kind of clarifying what everyone has been saying about her, she used to always, again, say things like food addiction, sugar addiction, junk food addiction. It was always addiction, 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 addiction. And she did use a definition of addiction in her video. Chapter 1. My Food Addiction Addiction the repeated involvement of a substance or activity that continues despite all negative consequences that arise from it. Which is true, you can have a food addiction, but like I said, it goes much past just food and reaping the consequences of your actions. It's a mental thing before it's a physical. I'm not gonna lie, some of it might be a little bit nitpicky, but I just wanna bring them up because they're still questionable or problematic even if they're nitpicky, but I can do that, it's my channel. If you don't like it, don't watch the video. Okay, so the first thing I already brought it up is not putting trigger warnings. Olivia has not put trigger warnings on any of her videos, um, not from season one or season two. Now an argument I've seen plenty of times under the community post whenever she's brought this up is people are like, the video literally is about her weight loss journey. Why would you click on a video if you are know what it's gonna be about you know and th that is true i can see your point of view and i do agree with those people that say she's not really responsible for our triggers because we click on a video knowing kind of the idea of what it's gonna be about and i understand that but at the same time olivia may not be responsible for our triggers but she is responsible for at least letting us know what is going to be embarked on in a video with such a heavy topic such as weight loss and eating disorders and food addiction or whatever you want to call it so it's up to you as a content creator yes you don't have to be responsible for our triggers you are not responsible for someone else's triggers but it is your responsibility as a content creator to use your platform one wisely and be mindful of your viewers safety and the content that they're going to consume let them know what they're going to be getting into especially if there's very triggering things in there such as body checking binge episodes negative self-talk etc which are things very prevalent in the series so next thing i'm not going to touch on too much just because i'm not very comfortable talking about it and that is her her family's words to her especially related to her appearance and this is something seen in both season one and season two but i feel like we got to see a lot more heftier versions of it in season two okay so as you guys know i went on a trip over the weekend and i'm also aiming for a healthy relationship with food Hi, it's my messy editing self. I have some very important disclaimers. Number one, this specific instance was the result of like a big fight that I had with my mom. And it sounds like in this case, she really wanted me to lose weight for my image. But let me tell you guys, she constantly is emphasizing to me, Olivia, I just want you to be healthy. I was asking cause she makes this like really good meat. And for dinner, I like to incorporate a little bit of it. And I was asking her like how to make it. And then she's just like, why are you even going to try to eat healthy after the way you ate this weekend and i'm like are you serious i'm not gonna eat salad and lettuce for every meal because you want me to lose weight and then i feel miserable and then i want to binge it's hard when your family members you know when you are on this journey and no one really understands as much because there's no one in my family that ever struggled with food what do you have to say about me currently Never change. What do you mean? Fantastic. You just cannot change. That is not true, Mom. Okay, then. You cannot even prove me wrong. I'm a walking joke. Babe, I'll carry that in. Not bad Babe. looking. Yeah, just need to dress up a little. You have I so cried. much potential, but you just cover that potential with oily hair, glasses, and a oh my body. Gosh. <laughs> 
So obviously, she seems to be going through this journey very much so by herself, which makes it even more depressing and lonely and any other adjective you can use to describe that. I very much so acknowledge that we do not know her or her family as much as she knows her and her family. I'm just saying this from an outsider's perspective. From the outside looking in, it is pretty clear that her family can and has the tendency to say some really damaging things, whether it's coming from a place of love or not. And also a lot of people use the argument that, you know, she's Asian, this is how Asian parents are. We're referring to her mom though, because her dad's white, I'm pretty sure. That doesn't make it okay, you know? Like it's still a really damaging thing to say and really damaging things to do, especially for someone who one, feels alone in this in the sense that no one else in her family struggles with this. And two, you see she's struggling a lot. Why would you want to say more damaging negative things to make that feeling even worse? Hi, I'm editing the video right now, but I did want to make a little tangent about this point because I actually just recently watched a video by Stephanie Buttermore, literally one of my favorite YouTubers, who just did kind of like a scientific study research analysis on whether or not saying rude or mean things to larger bodies and if it'll actually push them into losing weight and actually work. Spoiler alert, it doesn't. It actually makes things a lot worse, but I I was thinking about this in reference to Olivia because even though they said these things to her, I'm sure she's used to it, but obviously from an outsider looking in, it can look really damaging. And I just wanted to say it had the possibility to be damaging, which is why I brought it up. Obviously it didn't affect her, especially because she is defending her family time and time again. But like I said in the video, even if it's coming from a place of love and care, and if that's just how Asian parents are, that doesn't make it okay because it still has the potential to cause a lot of damage and sometimes times irreversible. So I will leave Stephanie's video in the description below. Super informative, highly recommend, and also subscribe because her scientific health videos, amazing. <laughs> and again, I'm not sure if Olivia takes it the way we see it, but if she's taking it well, I and if she took it well, I'm glad that she has that kind of like strong attitude towards it because for someone who is a little bit more sensitive to those type of things, it can really be damaging to someone's mental. Whether you say someone lost weight or whether you say someone gained weight, you never know if you're kind of one validating them or triggering them to do one or the other so that's why it's just better to not comment on people's appearance you guys know i've preached about this time and time again the next thing that was uh very questionable <laughs> for the viewers this happened in episode one towards the end of episode one she was kind of going through a montage of her revelations that she went through prefacing the rest of the episodes that are to come in the rest of the season she used these three words describing her food addiction binge eating she labeled her past self as weak lazy and undisciplined let's unpack this shall we and again this just kind of goes back to like the negative self-talk thing it's things like this which is why these videos need a trigger if you're going to apply those labels to your past self please let people know that you're going to be doing this thing of negative self-talk because again there is kind of a beauty in seeing someone else's struggle especially if it's a struggle you relate to because you kind of put yourself in that person's situation and in some senses you see yourself in that person's situation and the problem with this labeling herself as weak lazy and undisciplined you are subliminally <laughs> indirectly whatever term you want to use especially for those people who see themselves in you you're also labeling those people as weak lazy and undisciplined and i'm aware of the fact that a lot of people have also made the argument that you know this is olivia's journey this is her journey her story it does not apply to everyone and that is very true i agree with you wholeheartedly but my counter to that, you cannot deny the fact, and this is a point that I'll be making later on, you cannot deny the fact that Olivia, while she is sharing her journey, she's sharing the personal experiences and kind of the things she's learned from those experiences and even some tips along the way. There is lines being blurred between what is personal experiences, what is tips, and what is like general versus personal. And something so personal, I get that she was saying I, 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 but again, for those people who are kind of using your experiences as like a oh my god I go through the same thing we're the same people who have that type of connection to you and the series you cannot say things like weak lazy and undisciplined and even then you are not weak lazy and undisciplined Olivia or anyone who's watching this video and has gone through the same thing this is not your fault this is a mental illness a chemical imbalance this starts in the mental rather than just you choosing to do this you don't choose to overeat you don't 
don't choose to under eat. And that just goes back to what I said earlier about the healthcare provider, physician, whatever you want to call it, who she mentioned that she went to and said that her binge eating was habitual rather than her being a victim of a mental illness and eating disorder. You're supporting the assumption that eating disorders are real because you make these choices. You choose to overeat. You choose to eat uncontrollably. You choose to be shameful because you're the one who made these decisions rather than it being a much more deeper rooted issue than just choices and habits that you develop over time. And again, I say a lot of people had a problem with that because as I stated earlier with the NEDA saying that binge eating disorder is one of the most common of the eating disorders, it's also one of the most stigmatized and invalidated because of this reason. People assume that eating disorders are more a choice rather than something that is a mental illness and can kind of be out of your control. And I find it quite questionable that a physician told you that it was habitual rather than digging deeper and kind of looking into the facts because even then eating disorders aren't even just a product of having bad body image they can be rooted out of anything some people have trauma some people like the control because nothing else in their life is in control so i find it interesting that that was the conclusion that was made rather than considering other factors that could have caused for this to develop into her life and expanding upon the fact of invalidation olivia made a community post amongst the fire of this discussion and she quotes that she does not say that she has an eating disorder because she does not identify with having an eating disorder basically saying that she says she doesn't have binge eating disorder because binge eating disorder is not her she doesn't identify with it <laughs> and to that i say more power to you you don't have to identify with your eating disorder but that's the thing just because you have bed just because you have anorexia just because you have endos that doesn't mean you are your eating disorder does that make sense of course for a lot of people it can cloud a lot of the other aspects of their life that doesn't mean they are it and a lot of people were saying that in that community post you don't have to and you may not have to identify with your eating disorder but that doesn't mean it's not there like you don't have to make it part of you it's just something you're dealing with does that make sense and i feel like in that sense she also kind of gave not only just binge eating disorder but eating disorders in general a kind of bad connotation that you know oh i don't identify with this so i'm not gonna say i have it like you don't have to identify with it the facts are right in front of you you know what i'm saying analyze your own behavior go to a professional maybe a different one than the one you went to but i hope you get what i'm saying so this next thing is one of the more nitpickier things that i mentioned earlier it's not really an issue but i do see why people brought it up because i think it is also another one of those things of keeping your viewers and the people who may come across your content safe and letting them know what they're getting into people have found out that she actually adds some interesting tags to her videos. I found this in a discussion on Twitter, but Olivia has also added some eating disorder related video tags to her videos to, you know, reach a wider audience as us YouTubers do. Adding certain tags and keywords makes your videos much more impressionable to people who also watch videos with similar tags or similar themes. So the more tags, the more discoverable your video is. That's just a basic YouTuber, uh, tip tidbit so when you open the metadata to a site it's actually pretty easy to do it all you got to do is like press control and like a random button and it'll just pop up i forgot how to do it but <laughs> somebody opened up the metadata to one of the videos on her page and it had things like bulimia story binge eating story binge eating tips my eating disorder story binge eating disorder how to stop binge eating how to lose weight dieting tips how to lose 10 pounds bulimia story you know things like that <laughs> bro i was so shocked when i saw this picture and it I get it. I get it. You want your video to be more discoverable. But there's two gripes with this that people have mentioned and that I also kind of agree with. Is that one, it's very hypocritical. <laughs> it is very hypocritical because like I said, Olivia has said and come out and said that she does not have an eating disorder because she does not identify with it. But here you are putting tags in your videos. Okay, but that's a little bit nitpicky. But the second thing, which I actually think is very valid rather than just being nitpicky, again, about the safety of the people who come across your content especially with you not putting trigger warnings on these type of things there are people and especially young people very young and impressionable people who are going to come across these videos and take them as tips as i've said earlier olivia has this habit of kind of blurring the lines between what is her personal experience and what is tips and even breaking the tips down into another subsection tips for herself and then tips for the general public or her audience those lines are very blurred so if you're watching these videos and you're hearing things like i am weak lazy and undisciplined 
disciplined because I didn't know how to figure out how to control my eating disorder. You also are going to apply that to yourself. And that just goes back to what I said earlier. When you watch and consume content, no matter what it is, not even just YouTube videos, whether it be movies or whatever, you are subliminally ingraining a lot of the ideas and thoughts that are being pushed into that media into yourself. And there's no way we can kind of avoid it unless you just completely shied yourself away from media consumption. But things like Twilight. Twilight mm, gave us a very skewed perception of what a healthy or romantic or cute relationship is when it's very clear that everybody, Bella, Edward, Jake, <laughs> they all portrayed lots of toxic behavior that you should not be engaging in. I hope you don't think that someone watching you sleep at night is like cute and quirky. But obviously the series came out when some of us were in middle school or entering high school and we didn't really know any better. So of course, because they portrayed it as such, we accepted it as such and thought such behavior that is very toxic was cute or romantic when that's not the case. And the same thing goes for things even as simple as a YouTube video. Because again, she displays a lot of the things she says in these videos as tips and not only just tips for herself, but tips for the general public. And there have been some cases of people calling her out for spreading a lot of misinformation. And I haven't really looked into that for the sake of this video but i definitely have had my fair share of watching some of these videos and being like mm, don't know about that one type b but i don't think it's too bad to the point where it needs to be like a whole entire subsection in and of itself all i'm saying is that if you do decide to watch these videos for genuine tips and not just to watch someone's story is to take those tips with a grain of salt so the next thing that i thought was pretty problematic in a sense was most recently brought up in episode three and that is the idea that discomfort and struggle means growth. So episode three basically shows a lot of her kind of like actual working out moments where she was, you know, training and exercising, doing a lot of self-motivation and all this other stuff. Even things like walking past her neighbor. She said that the last time her neighbor saw her, she was a lot thinner and then he saw her again and she obviously was not thinner and how she dealt with that and things like that, which I actually thought were pretty interesting to bring up, but not even just in episode three, but laced throughout all the episodes. There's a lot of quotes related to comfort and how being uncomfortable is what causes growth and change is all about getting out of your comfort zone those people that are all like oh look at me first day doing well i just want to let you know it's not easy it's freaking hard you don't feel good this is bringing me to happiness ironically i know because it's like well dang olivia you said you're uncomfortable you're not feeling good yeah that's the point when you're in discomfort you know you're growing and that is the only way to be happy because progress equals growth growing is living living is happiness and that is a very true statement to that i actually do agree and i like that she said that but it's more so the extremity of how she portrays it in that episode especially that episode i feel like instead of just going past the point of you know getting out of your comfort zone it was more so endorsing like pushing yourself to extreme limits for change and for that i'm not really for obviously if you're genuinely in a situation where you're say working out and you really just cannot keep going don't get up and push yourself to keep going like please stop and prioritize your health and you obviously don't want to get injured or anything like that because it is true i think change does happen when you get out of comfort because your brain likes comfort especially if it's something that you're doing repeatedly over and over again breaking the cycle is the first step to get started on a new path so i think it's important that you try to switch things up if you want to see a new aspect manifest into your life but please if you are going through a journey similar listen to your body there's a saying that you won't know your limits until you push them but once you kind of know your extreme limits learn not to push them too extremely because you still want to be safe at the end of the day okay i changed the hair because me and the beanie were not doing it but anyways so the next thing i'm not really sure if it's considered nitpicky or if it's like a valid point i think it's somewhere in between i guess it just depends on how you look at it but that is olivia's trend of like toxic positivity in the videos now i understand why you would even want to have a more positive outlook with things like weight loss and diet because again it can get really sticky sometimes and triggering and just like an uncomfortable thing to talk about or even go through so i get why she would be more inclined to talk positively about it also because it does help when you have a more positive outlook and mindset towards things you actually pay attention to the better rather than the bad versus when you are negative things seem more negative because you always get back what you put out you feel me but the main thing people say is more so just about the fact she uses a lot of like quotes and books and things like that <laughs> as advice 
advice for herself and also just to give a little bit of motivation and advice to her viewers if you will and there's nothing wrong with that pause because that is literally disgusting it looks like i'm digging for freaking gold but i kind of just scratched the outside of my nose i'm sorry you had to see that but i think the issue that people are saying is she's kind of using those quotes and books as like a therapy or like an end-all be-all solution when that's just not the case for some people some people need a lot more than just you know pinterest quotes or book quotes to deal with the problems that they're dealing with but i do understand both perspectives of just wanting to send out positivity but also kind of being a realist in the sense that quotes aren't going to be the thing that just magically change your mind changing your mindset especially when it's something that you haven't ever really tried to change or have had a hard time changing it's not as easy as just you know saying quotes to yourself over and over again but i do see how sometimes people think it kind of goes a little bit too far it just goes back to her having the issue of making lots of generalizations just based on her own personal experiences and that's one of the bigger points as well as i mentioned earlier the blurring of the lines between what is my personal experience what did i learn from my personal experience and what can you learn from my personal experiences those three things aren't always definitively defined <laughs> and it can be confusing especially for someone who again is very impressionable and coming across these videos genuinely looking for tips and for help the biggest case of this was again with the <laughs> therapist or the psychiatrist or the physician thing and she went out saying in a video that this type of behavior is habitual it's taught you teach yourself how to do these things unless you learn how to break the cycle there are smaller examples of it throughout the series but again i feel like those are a little bit more nitpicky and not as like intense as this example it is intense which is why i keep using it because again the series just started and things like this are being said and i get the perspective of wanting to share your personal experiences and learn from them and then and teach us what you learned from them so that we you know don't make the same mistakes but there's a way to do it there's always a method to the madness and I feel like sometimes it can teeter on the side that's not so great and related to that the next point I said was her intentions of good messages but the phrasing isn't always the best Olivia genuinely does have some good 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 tips especially just about your outlook towards food or how you think about weight loss how you think about dieting or just going through these ebbs and flows of trying to better your mental health and just your eating relationship with food. I also was brought to the attention of these tweets. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing because it's not funny. I just thought they were really interesting to say the least. I'm gonna pop them up on the screen. This is a little bit nitpicky, but I just, I feel like these tweets perfectly embody what I mean when I say she has good intentions with her messages, but sometimes the phrasing just is not. These tweets are still live. You can see them, at least as of when I'm recording this. She tweeted out, nothing tastes as good as healthy feels. And if you are someone who has never been part of like the pro Anna community, there's a very popular quote. I'm pretty sure all of us know that goes, nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. Kind of a play on words of like, you know, if you're starving yourself and you're skinny, at least that's good. You know, nothing tastes as good. You can bask in how you look rather than being upset that you're starving i don't i don't know how else to explain it if you get it you get it if you don't you don't but yeah her taking a pro and a quote and turning it and trying to like flip it to be better it's like i get the vision but the execution not the best idea i just feel like you could have tweeted something else and then this other one which i actually thought was not good at all not even joking this was on august 8th 2020 it says hunger is the first element of self-discipline and again this whole usage of discipline even hunger intertwining that that's very much so perpetuating like disordered eating if you're physically hungry you need to eat that's kind of like the main premise of normalized non-disordered eating you eat when you're hungry and you stop when you're full self-discipline has nothing to do with being hungry you do not need to skip meals to lose weight you do not need to go hungry to lose weight if anything it's all about eating when you're actually hungry so you can get your hunger cues and your brain chemicals back in order to let you know when you're actually hungry and let you stop eating when you're actually full so you don't overeat or undereat and create this messed up pattern of hunger cues because then you 
end up going right back to square one. This is something you would definitely see on like a 2010 pro anna forum that describes hunger as a good feeling because it means you're doing something good for yourself, but you're not. You're starving yourself and you have to eat when you're hungry. If your body's telling you that it's hungry, feed it. And when it's not hungry anymore, it'll stop being hungry. It'll send off those signals and you'll stop eating. You don't have to restrict yourself in the sense of starving yourself to be considered disciplined. Things like this, especially the hunger is the first element of self-discipline tweet perpetuates damn near pro anorexia <laughs> that is not okay for someone whether you're impressionable or not to be hearing and consuming and finally the last kind of controversial topic that has been brought up with olivia's series is the fact that people think she's moving from one eating disorder to the next or one toxic mindset to the next like i said i am no health professional medical professional or anything so i cannot and will not diagnose anyone and you should not do the same either but again this is another perspective that I do see from the outside looking in. A lot of people think she is just moving from binge eating disorder to something like orthorexia and it seems as if she still kind of has a very tunnel vision view of what is healthy and what is being considered recovered from your eating disorder and I am not one to really make a valid or accurate analysis on her because I don't know her and again I'm not a health or medical professional but what I can say is that I hope that that is not the case especially for someone like Olivia because in her videos you hear a lot whenever she's talking about her food addiction it's very much so based on the food and not really her if that makes any sense a lot of the times you'll hear her talking about the chemicals that may release in your brain when you're eating junk food versus when you're eating healthy food she'll talk about research and how junk food fast food companies do research to try and make you eat more of their crappy food which is all very true things and things you should know because when you kind of learn what things happen to your body when you consume that type of food you'll be inclined hopefully to not eat any more of it willfully rather than by force so i get why she always accentuates those points in the videos but even then after you see her saying these things like that and these inspiring quotes there's a clip where it cuts right back to her going back to starbucks and eating and buying a bunch of pastries and desserts for breakfast it's not that simple to just do research and read this one quote i see where her perspectives come from but i just think it's important to acknowledge that the food is not the only problem and I'm gonna keep saying it. Eating disorders go so much more past just the food. And I don't want her to think, oh, if I start eating super healthy <laughs> and eating a ton of HelloFresh, that I'll never gain weight again or my weight will never fluctuate. Like, I don't want her to just think that all junk food is bad food because you can indulge. It's not you cheating or doing anything. You're just enjoying life. And if a Chick-fil-A or McDonald's meal is what you need to feel good every once in a while, that's fine. You just have to find a balance. And whatever your balance is, whatever works for you, that is your balance. But anyways. I just want to share my own like personal story, personal takeaways from the series. Again, I'm very aware of the fact that it just started. There's literally three episodes. <laughs> I really hope that she does like take these criticisms that a lot of people are saying about the series into account. You obviously don't have to like please your viewers, but I think it's just more important to be mindful of the content you're putting out, especially because of the audience that is watching it and the message you're trying to convey. You don't want to screw that up in any way because i think the series is actually again very inspiring helpful it's relatable like i said there are some pretty good tips in there you just kind of got to take things with a grain of salt especially when it comes to giving advice olivia herself is also not a professional or uh or anything like that don't just listen to a youtube video or even me but yeah at my big age i still am dealing with the disordered thoughts even if i am eating normally no matter if you see someone eating a lot eating a little bit you never know what's going going on up here and you never know what they're going through so i think it's important to just be mindful of what you say and even if you are someone who's making content or just trying to like be an ally <laughs> in you know eating disorder recovery or just having a better relationship with food or weight loss or whatever the case is just be mindful of the information you're putting out the language you're using and also how you might be making other people feel and even look into yourself like how do you think you are affecting yourself what about the media you consume you know i don't know if that makes any sense but yeah just 
just please remember that health is never physical it's never been just physical health is all about your function health is about how you feel health is about how you think please just don't aid in the perpetuation if that's a word of thinking that eds are simply physical and just a little weight loss diet and if you actually do have concerns talk to someone who is i don't know educated <laughs> olivia can only do so much i can only do so much do yourself a favor and get the help that you actually need and actually deserve if trying to self recover isn't the option for you please know that you are valid no matter what no matter what eating disorder or disordered eating issue that you may be going through right now you are completely valid you're not weak you're not lazy you're not undisciplined no matter what the case may be you are completely valid this is not the only thing your life comes to and i'm still trying to teach myself that you don't have to live like this and there is a light at the tunnel for everyone to recover and to finally be free and enjoy life with food in it as much as they can without having any sort of negative connotation or label on it and i really do hope that olivia takes into account her influence and how much these videos do actually mean to people and that they do sometimes mindlessly consume them and take her advice so she has to be a little bit more responsible of how that information is conveyed to us as the audience i'm talking all this hot shit but i will still be watching the series i really am interested in her story and i want to see how it plays out because i do enjoy her other content and i have grown to love her videos but i just hope that this kind of recovery and this weight loss change is genuine from the inside out and not just the outside you know but I think with all that being shared, that's all I need to say for this video. That's all my commentary or whatever. Again, if anyone needs it, there will be resources in the description. You can also feel free to comment anything in the comments. I've only made one video specifically talking about like my disordered eating and my kind of eating disorder story, if you will. And I'll link that in the card in the description if you want to watch it. It is a little bit old and I totally did not understand the concepts of things like trigger warnings and stuff back then. So in the title there are some trigger warnings for like body checks and things like pictures and all that stuff so just be wary of that if you want to watch it i will link below the two playlists that olivia has of the glow up diary series if you also want to watch that again watch it with caution because there aren't really any trigger warnings on there so just be mindful of how much of the content you decide to consume and feel free to just stop watching whether it be my video or hers just keep yourself safe at the end of the day if you enjoyed this video feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe because it means a lot and helps me a lot feel free to follow me on on Instagram and any of my other social medias will obviously be linked in the description below as they always are. I'm going to cut this off and I'll see you in my next video. Pretty sure.